Good morning everyone and thank you so much for inviting me to give the opening address at the 2024 Fisheries Management Scotland Conference. I am just so sorry that I can't be there with you in person today but I have no doubt it will be a great day. The theme of this year's conference is Cold Clean Water, steering the future for Scotland's rivers. Firstly, the ambition of cold clean water is so important, not only to provide our wild salmon with the conditions they need to thrive, but also to support Scotland's biodiversity more widely. As we collectively work to tackle the twin crises of climate change and biodiversity loss, it is important that we continue to drive forward efforts to make cold clean water a reality for rivers across Scotland. Secondly, the focus on steering the future for Scotland's rivers ensures that, as well as learning from our past actions, we're also looking forward and identifying practical solutions and new ways of doing things that will help us achieve our shared goals. This afternoon's session will have a real focus on the future, where there will be an opportunity to recognise and discuss the work you do to develop new partnerships and capitalise on opportunities. Over the course of the last few years in my role as Rural Affairs Secretary, I've attended many events and visits with the fisheries management sector, whether that's been opening a fishing season, planting trees on a riverbank or speaking at a NASCO event. I've met many people involved in boards, trusts and other partner organisations. And something that always resonates with me is your willingness to look for solutions and also your enthusiasm for putting in the work on the ground. And I'm sure that that practical focus will be another theme running through today's conference sessions. It is now just over a year since we launched the Wild Salmon Strategy Implementation Plan and we remain as committed as ever to delivering on those actions. Earlier this week we published a progress report summarising the important progress that has been made on over 50 of the plan's actions in its first year. Now while there is still work to do, we should take a moment to reflect on everyone's hard work on this over the last 12 months. Therefore, I wanted to take this opportunity to highlight a few key examples of that progress. Firstly, we've established a delivery group for the implementation plan with representatives from the organisations that are responsible for delivering those actions within the plan. Having that governance framework in place is critical for success to ensure the accountability and momentum for delivery. FMS and several representatives from boards and trusts sit on the delivery group because we recognise the important role they play in local management to mitigate the impact of pressures on salmon. Secondly, we were clear in both the strategy and the implementation plan that we need robust monitoring of salmon populations to underpin that local management. In the last year, we've invested an additional £500,000 in monitoring both adult and juvenile salmon. Going forward, our recently established Wild Salmon Strategy Science and Evidence Board will develop a Scotland-wide monitoring strategy to ensure that we can collect the information we need in the most efficient and practical way. I was fortunate enough to spend some time with the Outer Hebrides Fisheries Trust in September last year while they were undertaking their electrofishing for NEPs. It was great to see firsthand how the equipment is used and what's involved in collecting this invaluable data. In the last year, SEPA have introduced a new sea lice risk assessment framework to manage the risks of wild salmon from fish farms in Scotland. Monitoring, modelling and scientific evidence will be used to support responsive and adaptive management. This is one part of a programme of work to ensure the aquaculture regulatory framework is fit for purpose. And I would like to acknowledge the wild fisheries sector's valuable contributions throughout the development of that framework. Your views will continue to be important as implementation progresses and effective monitoring programmes are developed. In addition to these examples of progress, as a result of changes to the forestry grant scheme announced last year, 175,000 hectares of riparian land is now eligible for an increased grant rate for tree planting. Now this will provide multiple benefits, including protecting rivers from temperature extremes, providing the salmon with the cold water that they need. SEPA are also continuing to implement river basin management plans and we're investing £4 million this year to continue the work of the Water Environment Fund. This work includes removing barriers and restoring urban rivers, giving salmon and other fish species access to high quality habitat. These are just a few examples of work that has progressed at a national scale. I know that many more projects will be taking place at a local level, which are equally important in helping us achieve our shared vision for wild salmon in Scotland. 
It is important to remember that the implementation plan covers a five-year period to 2028 and in a time of constrained resources, we can't tackle everything all at once. However, the first year has set a great example of what can be achieved if we maintain that momentum. I was disappointed, as I'm sure you were too, that the provisional catch statistics for 2023 showed such low numbers of salmon. I think it is easy to feel disheartened, but I would urge you all to remember that we never expected to see a quick recovery of populations. We know it can take years or even decades to see biodiversity improvements as a result of the actions we're taking. However, what we do know is that action to restore catchments and improve habitat will be beneficial. The wild salmon strategy is ambitious, and if we are to deliver it in full, significant investment is required. In 2023, our Marine Fund Scotland provided over £750,000 to support the protection and recovery of wild salmon. The funding awarded to FMS and split between four projects has been used to support the purchase of new monitoring equipment for electrofishing, acoustic deterrent devices for the control of specialist seals, research to improve the detection of invasive pink salmon and the development of a coordinated approach to fisheries management plans across Scotland. I'm proud that the Marine Fund Scotland is supporting vital work like this, as well as a whole range of wider, exciting and innovative projects in marine and fisheries businesses and coastal communities across Scotland. I'm therefore delighted to announce that the Marine Fund Scotland will, from today, be open for applications for the 2024-25 financial year. Up to £14 million will be available for grant awards to support individuals, businesses, organisations and communities to deliver projects which contribute to an innovative and sustainable marine economy, reduce carbon emissions, protect the health, safety and well-being of our marine workforce and support our coastal communities. Guidance and information on how to apply to the fund can be found on the Scottish Government website. And I would encourage anyone with, across Scotland with a project that fits with the fund's aims to consider making an application for support. And I'm really excited to see the range of projects that will come forward. In light of this announcement today, it would be remiss of me not to mention my continued view that marine funding in Scotland continues to be shortchanged by the UK government. I'm clear that the funding currently allocated to the Scottish Government by the UK Government for marine and fishery support is vastly insufficient given the size and importance of the Scottish marine sectors. The UK Government has also so far provided no certainty on funding that we will receive for marine and fisheries funding in Scotland beyond 24-25. I continue to press the UK Government to uphold its commitment to replace lost EU funding in full and to provide the level and certainty of funding that will allow for long-term investment in marine and fisheries in Scotland. In closing today, I would like to restate the Scottish Government's commitment to deliver on the actions within the Wild Salmon Strategy Implementation Plan, which will provide positive outcomes for wild salmon. I'm so pleased to have had the opportunity today to highlight some of the progress that's been made in the last year and I want to thank everyone who has been involved, no matter how big or small, because you have all made a difference. I really am disappointed to be missing out on the talks later today, but I wish you all a great conference and I would urge you to take the opportunity to learn from one another, build on current partnerships and identify new ways to work together. Thank you.